Did you ever wonder the land which gave the world shunya the concept of zero discovered the decimal system the very land that laid the foundations of calculus centuries before the west now falls so far behind in modern mathematics the proof is right here pisa score paint a devastating picture in 2009 When India last participated in the PISA test, we ranked 72 out of 73 countries in mathematics. But this isn't just about the test scores. The problem runs much deeper. Ask yourself, when was the last time an Indian won the field medal, which is the Nobel Prize for Mathematics? Where are the groundbreaking patents or innovations? Why is India not leading in artificial intelligence which needs a deep understanding of mathematics? India boasts of a glorious past in mathematics. So why is the current status of education so messed up? The problem begins right in our classroom. How did we end so badly in mathematics? How did we end up with a system where so many of our students have a deep seated fear of mathematics? The National Education Policy 2020 tries to fix this. It speaks about experiential learning and critical thinking. But is it sufficient to pivot the entire mindset or is it just a band-aid solution? Let's dig deeper and find out. The problem isn't just about the test scores. Have you seen in daily life, for example, a farmer who can calculate his crop yield mentally, or a street vendor doing complex transactions, but a school children fumbling over calculations? So, maths in our current system has been made sterile, clinical, and devoid of fun and curiosity. Let's take another example. So, if you give these questions to our students, they will simply take out the pen, paper, and solve using the unitary method. So the cost of eight toffees is eighteen rupees. So the cost of one toffee will be eighteen divided by eight, and they do the long division process and get the exact answer as two point two five. Now the Indian way of solving this question have always been mentally. That is simply double the price and find it out, and it's easy to compare. So why does it all matter? It affects our children's future. It affects India's future. Look around you. The app on your phone, the UPI which runs, which makes transactions so simple, or the metro which runs on time. What do they have in common? Mathematics. So how do we build the next world-class app? Or how do our students create innovation in science, engineering, and technology? the answer to all this lies with mathematics if we still have the fear of mathematics how can we even think about the future of our children or in fact the future of our country but was maths is boring subject that we see today let's travel back in time in ancient india maths was not taught in a boring classroom it was a tool which was used to find solutions to the real world problems They didn't learn it from the textbook. It was there in the puzzles, stories, and poetry. Maths was everywhere in art, ritual, and philosophy. So this brings us to the heart of the solution: Vedic mathematics. So what is it? It is the name given to the ancient system of mathematics, which was rediscovered from Vedas from 1911 and 1918 by Jagat Guru Shankaracharya, Sri Bharatiya Krishna Tirtha Ji. he beautifully compressed it into 16 sutras now academics do debate about its exact origin but the philosophy is undeniably ancient indian now remember in ancient times maths was not separated from observation and real life and that's the key vedic mathematics is not just a set of calculation tricks it is in fact based on intuition patterns or how our mind works one of my most popular classes in mathematics has always been vedic mathematics so when we do this calculation questions with the students they often end up asking one question 
Why weren't we taught such an amazing method while we were in schools? Now let's take an example from Vedic Math Sutra, which is Vilokanam. Vilokanam simply means observation, that is solving a question with a macro perspective. You bought an article for 137 rupees and you have exactly 1000 rupee note. So how much change will you give? Now with the ancient Indian way of solving this question, it is left to right. So in this method, what you do is you start from one. What number should be added to one to get nine? Yes, it is eight. What number should be added to three? Six. And what number should be added to seven to get 10? That is three. So you straight away get the answer as eight, six, three. Right? To answer that, you have to see how the ancient Indian mindset works. Mathematics was not restricted to books. It was a way in which you see the universe. So in Western mathematics, it is a proper left brain approach, which is clinical, logical, step-by-step, -step, fixed mindset. But in the ancient Indian way of mathematics, it was about intuition, seeing the pattern. So it is using both the left and right hand side of the brain. Let's start with the legend Srinivas Ramanujam. For him, mathematics was a divine pursuit. He famously said, an equation has no meaning for him unless it expresses a thought of God. For Ramanujam, his formulas were given to him in visions by Goddess Namagiri. For him, mathematics was a spiritual conversation. Now contrast this vision with what mathematics is taught today. In fact, Paul Locart, the famous American mathematician in his book, A Mathematician Lament, talks about the soul-crunching way of teaching mathematics. He perfectly sums it up as a way in which we have reduced maths to clinical step processes of following a fixed mindset. So what's the solution? Professor Manjul Bhargava, the mathematician who won a field medal in 2014, a professor from Princeton, he said since his roots are from India, that India should be its own cultural ambassador. It's time that we bring alive all these formulas and this knowledge back into the society. But it has to be done in a scientific and accessible way. The way forward isn't complicated. It's about getting to a simple truth. We need to get the fear out of the student's mind about mathematics and bring joy and fun back in mathematics. Vedic mathematics was never about the rigid rules. It was about observation, pattern and creativity, which is what the national education policy is all about. So the national education policy talks about the what Vedic mathematics shows us how mathematics has to be done. So it is time to bring our heritage back into the classroom. We cannot afford another set of generation who are scared of mathematics. So it's time to raise this question. So I'll ask this question not as a teacher, but as someone who believes in students potential. Do you think we should get this back into our classroom? Do let me know about your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Let's keep this conversation alive.